Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's just around the corner. It's hard to believe it's only, uh, what, 10 days away, maybe? What is today, the 15th? One of you put in a comment on one of my recent videos saying that it wouldn't be Christmas without crown and comments. So I got the crown, and I guess we get on to the comments. This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Okay, so I think we can dispense with this for now. I think we all know what time of year it is. So anyway, I always like to remind you, if you're passionate about motorcycles, and this doesn't all have to do with motorcycles on this particular show, but if you are passionate about motorcycles, you love anything to do with two wheels, please take a second, click that subscribe button down below because I have a goal, a very important goal. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And YouTube, for some reason, is kicking my ass. It may be my fault. Maybe I'm just not putting out good content, but the last couple of videos I've put out haven't gotten much uh, views, shall we say. That's probably my fault. I just you know, whatever. So let me remind you, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's completely free. Just click the subscribe button. Don't forget that notification bell, because that way YouTube will let you know when I come out with new videos. And you wouldn't want to miss any of this riveting content. So anyway, a, a little bit of business I want to take care of before we get to the comments. I've got my Mac here. Um, I'm going to go in and pull up the comments here real quick. So I'm ready to go on the computer. But before we do, I want to mention, you may notice some difference in the studio. Uh, you'll notice the uh, sound deadening panels behind me may look smaller and thinner. That's because I have moved my uh, studio desk that I use uh, farther away from them, and so they appear smaller. Uh, I am in the process of redecorating my studio and I bought a new tool chest, identical to the one that I have in the garage, uh, one of these Husky tool chests. I got one in white, because I think it looks kind of cool. And I, I'm not, I haven't decided yet how I'm gonna decorate the studio. I may move these sound panels to in front of me, uh, so they don't get as much uh, echo. We get a lot of echo in this room because it's high ceilings and just hard walls. I do have carpet, which helps. But I do have those sound panels, so I may move those up there and maybe put some shelves with some stuff on the shelves back there. The problem I have with this studio is I also do videos here for my cruise channel. So if I put a bunch of tools and helmets and stuff like that, then I'd have to change it every time I do a video. Uh, you notice I have this blue light behind me that kind of gives a little bit of a you know, makes me look angelic, I guess. And then we have an orange light over here that's kind of reflecting off the wall. So we'll, I'm gonna play around with the lights. I'm gonna play around with the decor. So you may see some changes in the studio coming up in the next few videos. Next thing I wanna point out, I did, and I'm, some of my, a lot of my comments have to do with the video that I did on the climb gloves that my friend Dale had and his issues with the warranty. You know, he only had those gloves four months, um, and the stitching started falling apart. And I think I mentioned in my video that I did, I have a pair of gloves that I bought at Cycle Gear when I bought my Goldwing, my 2018 Goldwing. So I've had them at least four years. They were, I think at the time I paid like 19, they had them on sale. I paid like 20 bucks or 25 bucks or something. It was really cheap. They've held up really good. Now, I like the looks. They're pretty comfortable. I'm sure they're not as comfortable as the $179 climb gloves, okay? I'm not debating that. But I went on their website after I did that climb uh, thing. I, I looked at my gloves closely, and they are starting to wear. There is a little bit of stitching coming undone. There's, they're starting to show their age, but they're four years old. I went on Cycle Gear's website 
and they still make my gloves. They're called the Sprint, I think Sprint by Built, which is their brand. And they had them on sale again. They're normally $59. They had them on for $29.95. I couldn't believe it. So I bought two pair just so I'd have an extra pair just in case anything happens. So just so you know. And I never had any trouble with stitching coming loose on these gloves. Also, when I got this new tool chest in, I ordered it from Home Depot and they delivered it. And I, when I got the one that's in the garage right now, the black one, uh, when they delivered it, it was already assembled. And I just basically rolled it up the driveway into the garage and started using it. Well, this one actually came on a pallet. And uh, fortunately, the delivery guys were very nice. They have one of those little portable forklift type things that they can use, you know, with their hands, little trucks. And they agreed to put it in my garage for me because there's no way in hell I could have gotten that up the driveway. So they did that. I tipped the guy 20 bucks just for doing it. I appreciated it. And then I had the issue of assembling it. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do a video on this because even though it's not motorcycle related, it's kind of garage related, it's tool related. And so um, occasionally I'll do a video that's something that's really not motorcycle related. So I'm going to do a video on how I did the assembly on this tool chest. And it did present a unique challenge because this thing's pretty heavy. And I had to get it off the pallet, get the casters on, and then I had to figure out how to get it righted back up. And so real quick, uh, just a quick reminder, still going on the holiday promotion for my maintenance video series. Use the promo code HOLIDAY. You'll save 20%. Now is the time of year that a lot of people really tear into their motorcycles, get them ready to winterize them, to change out all the fluids. This is, you know, maybe you can't ride right now, but you've got a nice garage you can work in. Now's the time to get the videos and do all that stuff yourself. The last bit of business before we get to my comments is I am having a garage sale. I kind of hinted at this on my last crown and comments because I got so much stuff around here I'm trying to get rid of to make room for all this new studio crap. Anyway, I've got communicators, action cameras, all kinds of stuff that I'm trying to sell. These are products that I have been that I have reviewed. Uh, I've tested them. I've used them. I did a video. It's called a garage sale video. I am not going to make it public. I don't want to put it out there because I don't want it to be. I want it to be just for those of you who are subscribers, who are loyal to the channel. So let's talk about the Climb Glove video. Got lots of comments from you on it. Obviously, there's two camps. There are some of you out there that are very loyal Climb customers. They really love the brand. And I knew that was going to happen. And I expected that. And I'm sure that Climb is a a reputable brand, obviously. I always had heard good things about them until this thing that happened with Dale's gloves and how they handled the warranty. Well, the first comment is from Clay Nicholson, and Clay uh, comments from time to time. And he says, I don't understand how a store manager's mind works. It wouldn't have cost them a penny to exchange the gloves, and then they can deal directly with Klein. Now, I'm not going to read the whole comment. You can read it on the screen. I agree with him 100%. The first problem with Dale's story, not with his story, but with the situation, is the retailer where he purchased the gloves, they should be your advocate with the manufacturer. You shouldn't have to deal directly with the manufacturer, but they do a lot of volume with Climb. They are Climb's customer, not you. Climb sells to them. They don't sell to you unless unless you bought it directly from Climb. And they're a big customer. So a, a retailer does a lot of business with these manufacturers. They have more leverage and they can get things done that you can't get done on your own. So I believe that the retailer where he purchased the gloves should have intervened on his behalf and taken care of this for him, especially since he's done a lot of business with that retailer and sends them a lot of business. Now, there are some people on the other side. This is from Frank Ward. Frank says, I have a pair of climb induction gloves, and they're the best fitting, most comfortable summer riding gloves I've tried yet. So he's a fan. Okay, 
no no debating that. I think Dale was happy with the gloves. He just wasn't happy with the way they handled the warranty situation. Jerry Barbanel has an interesting take. He said, because I, I think in my video I mentioned that I have Olympia jacket and Olympia some Olympia gear, but that Olympia is now out of business. And Jerry's take was, maybe that's why Climb is in business and Olympia isn't. And I hope that's not true. I hope that Olympia didn't go out of business because they provided good customer service. Uh, they stood behind their product with me 100%. They replaced it under warranty, no questions asked, uh, never had a problem. And I've had other companies that have done the same thing. So, Jerry, I hope you're wrong. I, I hope that Climb is not still in business just because they're refusing to deal with a warranty situation. But thank you for the comment nonetheless. It's, it's a different point of view. Now, Jim Jackson says, I had a similar thread issue on my Climb induction gloves. I got on the Climb website, followed the warranty claim procedure, shipped off the gloves, and a few weeks later, I received a new pair. Okay, so Jim, you had a, you had a completely different experience than did uh, Dale. Now, I would like to ask you, and maybe you could put this in the comments down below, when was this? Was this recently, or was this before COVID, or was it just in the last few months? It'd be interesting to know that maybe things have changed at Climb. Maybe they're getting a little tighter on their warranty. I don't know. Now, Joe S. says, This video covers why I no longer make Climb my go-to. Same gloves. Same failure, and a good way to describe the climb response is to go pound sand. I have been and will continue to let others know climb is not what you think it is. So Joe had a similar experience to Dale. So Dale's not alone. Other people obviously have experienced this as well. Expensive products. Climb is one of the most expensive brands out there. 179 or 159 what is it 159 69 whatever it is 150 dollars plus for a pair of gloves and i don't know it just seems ridiculous to me now paul robinson says he's in the uk he says similar experience with climb in the uk they refused to cover the damage on my gore-tex lining in my badlands pro jacket those badlands pro jackets are not cheap uh, even though it has a lifetime warranty. And he goes on to talk about he spent a lot of money, thought it was going to last till he gave up riding, blah, blah, blah. So similar experience. Bad experience with Climb standing behind their warranty. Now, that's a lifetime warranty. I always get confused when they say lifetime warranty. Whose lifetime are they talking about? Are they talking about their lifetime, my lifetime, the lifetime of the company, the lifetime of the product? Oh, well, the product's life expired, so the warranty is no good. Now, Amar Sheik, I hope I'm saying that right, and I do watch his channel from time to time. He has some good content, so if you haven't checked out Amar Sheik's channel, check it out. He said, I had a great experience with Climb replacing my Climb Hard, hard Danger, I'm not sure, or Hardinger, one-piece suit on which the zip snapped. I emailed them, and all they wanted me to do was cut the suit, and the protectors in half and send them a picture. A week later, they sent me a new suit, which was better than mine, and it was the upgraded version. Okay, so I respect his experience. So he had a good experience with Climb. So it's all over the board. I guess it just depends on what day of the week or who you end up talking to at the company as to what your experience is going to be. Who knows? And then... XTZ19 says, I was 100% climb, got stiffed twice, once on a warranty and second time after a crash on a replacement program. No more climbs for me. Okay, so as you can see, there's people on both sides of this. Some have had great experiences, some not so great. Uh, who knows? Let's move on to one of my other videos that caught some comments, and that was the Acaso V50 Pro. Supernaut says, have people forgotten the adage, you get what you pay for? 
Uh, I was a little harsh on this V50 Pro, and it's really strange because my audio on that camera was terrible. I mean, it just came out muddy and like you're underwater, just horrible. But I watched a video the other day that somebody did with the same camera, and the audio wasn't that bad. I mean, it was it wasn't good, but it wasn't as bad as what I was getting. So maybe I just got a bad camera. Maybe it was a pre-production model. I have no way of knowing. I know it didn't have the correct battery charger. But as far as you get what you pay for, I've always said you don't always get what you pay for, but you almost never get what you don't pay for. David brought up a good point. He said, I would suspect that when the battery the batteries were in the charger, it might have damaged the batteries. I think I mentioned at one point that after 10 minutes of recording, the batteries were down to like 20%, and I didn't consider that. David makes a good point. It's possible that reversed polarity might have done some damage to those batteries, and that may be why it had such poor battery life. And I should have thought about that. I should have mentioned that in the video, but I, I didn't think about it. It never crossed my mind, so that's a very good point. And the last comment is from, hope I say this right, Challen Guillory, Challen Guillory. Cruise man, can you talk about or do a video using different communication devices to talk to each other using the mesh technology? I would love to have a Cena helmet like this. This was on my Cena impulse review video. I would love to have a Cena helmet like this but my crew I ride with uses Pack Talk Bolt. And I know they say you cannot connect, but I would love to see you prove that and basically prove it wrong. Shalin, I wish I I wish I was smarter and there are people out there. You might check uh, Chris Caliente's cha uh, channel because he rides in groups a lot and I know they do mixed uh, headsets. I'm not sure about the mesh. But I know that uh, I rode with Chris one time and we sat or we stood out in front of a hotel and we were all using Cena Bluetooth headsets and we had a devil of a time getting everybody in that group. And we were all using Cena and we were all using Bluetooth. This was before Mesh. I have not had much luck uh, connecting Pack Talk Bolds to Cena networks or vice versa. I'm, I'm sure it can be done. They say it can be done. You should be able to do it. Uh, if any of you out there have any experience in this, if any of you know of any videos that really go into depth on how to accomplish this, maybe you could uh, put a comment in the comments down below and help Challen out. I personally do not ride in a group that often, sometimes Don and I would ride together, but we both had Cena. I have never ridden in a in a mixed group of Cardo and Cena people with headsets from different brands. That's it for crowning comments for 2022. That's it. The next time we see you be in the new year. Is it kind of sacrilegious to have Santa drink in Crown Royal? I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do help me get to 50,000. I have got a bike that I'm picking up Saturday that I think some of you are going to be surprised. I think it's it's different than anything I've reviewed before. It's different than anything I've ridden before. It'll be the first time I've ever ridden this particular brand of motorcycle. I want to thank all of you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next year on Crown and Comments. But you gotta in that bag, yeah. I got her X Rax in my sack or in my bag, yeah. They said, say, Nick, what you gotta in that bag, yeah. I got her X Rax in my sack or in my bag, yeah. Neck is frozen.